everybody. Our very old Black & Decker Ice Maker toaster oven has finally failed and we're not able to find any new Black & Decker Space Maker toaster ovens. We like the Space Makers because they mount underneath our kitchen cabinets and they use a bracket and that bracket has a little bit of a bend in it that enables it to support the toaster oven on both sides along this slot you see here. Since we're unsuccessful finding new oven, obviously were many people who were selling these vintage ones that were in either poor condition or actually some of them were in like new condition, but uh, were way overpriced because you can pick up a new toaster oven for somewhere in the $30 range. Let me show you how we solved our problem. Do not attempt to do this yourself if you do not have the skill or the experience to do this safely. Last thing you want to do is create a fire or electrocute somebody or shock somebody. So this video is strictly to show you what I did to solve our problem and I'm in no way recommending you do this. Here's an excellent picture of what that heat guard mounting hood looks like. This is the top of the hood here. These are the sides and right here is this little lip that goes into the slots on the side of the toaster oven that I showed you earlier. What I did was I took my tin snips and I cut this off. I cut this little lip off on both sides so also removed this snipped it off. I haven't finished this up completely but I've snipped off that ledge on both sides. Did not cover up any of the side ventilation holes on the toaster oven. And it fits beautifully. I have the same clearance from the bottom of the hood to the top of the toaster oven so there's a lot of ventilation through here that keeps the cabinet above it from uh, catching on fire. The reason this works is because the screws that I have used and the location I have placed them are not in any hazardous location. They're not in jeopardy of shorting out anything or coming into contact with any live electricity. Let me show you the inside of the toaster oven and why this works. The thing we're most concerned about in doing this modification center around electrical clearances and electrical safety as well as thermal safety. This is a picture of the toaster oven with the one piece cover removed. I think it only took a handful of screws to remove it. And what I'm showing here, this is the inside of the toaster oven. This is the side wall right here. And this is the edge of the toaster oven out over here. And what I'm trying to demonstrate is that there's at least one inch clearance, approximately one inch clearance or more, a little more than that, from this surface to this interior surface, especially up at the corners. Similarly, on the other side, there's uh, something more like three inches of clearance. And again, nothing located up in the two corners, in this corner or that corner. So from an electrical clearance standpoint, if your mounting screws don't protrude too far into the enclosure, you're going to be totally safe. So what else do you have to consider? Well, one of the things to consider is the sheet metal is very, very thin. So if you're going to use screws, you're not going to get many threads of engagement, which I think creates a little bit of a potential problem. One simple way to do this would be to pop rivet the poster oven to the mounting hood. Uh, pop rivets are very, very shallow, would not go in too far into the enclosure and uh, you would be minimizing any risk of touching anything electrical. Again, that risk is very minimized if you stay in the two corners on, on my particular machine. Uh, another way to do it would be to use non-metallic screws. There are some very exotic um, non-metallic screws and that way if you ever had any kind of electrical short it would not uh, move from inside the enclosure to outside the enclosure. One other way to do it would be to put an aluminum or steel backing plate on the inside of the enclosure, beef up the wall thickness, you get a couple of screw threads of engagement. I would use very, very short screws. I wouldn't use a screw that was longer than a quarter inch uh, long, maybe three eighths of an inch max. And again, because the material is very thin, you need to pick a fastener that's going to give you the holding power that you're looking for. 
Lastly, you could also use something like a, a rivet nut, and you could use actually a closed end rivet nut. So when the rivet nut is installed into the sheet metal, and once a rivet nut is installed properly, when you thread your screw in, the screw is not allowed to protrude through the end of the rivet nut if you use a closed end rivet nut. Or you could even use something like this a, called a short jack nut. Obviously this size is way too big, a quarter twenty is much larger than you need, but I like the picture here so you get an idea. You basically drill a hole to the side of the enclosure, you insert the jack nut in through the hole, and then when you put your screw in and tighten it up, this whole section here compresses and becomes very, very short. And now you have a set of threads to hold your fastener, and you're not relying on the thickness of the sheet metal to hold your fastener. So that's another way you could do it. Here's my finished product. It keeps it off the counter for us. Saves us a little bit of space. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, this is just to show you what I did. I'm not recommending this. Proceed at your own risk. But it did solve a problem for us, and some of you will be interested in this kind of an approach. Put a thumbs up or subscribe if you found this at all entertaining or helpful.